Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to go over questions 36 to 39 or unit 14 of section 3 of the Orange Booklet. So this is a question about um, cellular respiration and how glucose gets oxidized um, along this Krebs cycle. Um, I've drawn out a simplified version of this pathway here, um, but all the structures are there on the paper. Um, question 36 says a pair of structural isomers is what? So given that we're given all the structural isomers, um, if we look at A, we can compare glucose and fructose, and you might already know that they are isomers of each other. What a structural isomer is, it's two different molecules that have the same number of each atom. So it, they both have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. They're just arranged in a different way. That makes them structural isomers. The answer for number 36 is going to be A. If we look at 37, then it says two compounds that have the same empirical formula are what? So I've drawn out all the structures here, and I think that's the easiest way um, of having a look at what the structure might be. Um, so what an empirical formula is, is the most simplified ratio of all the different atoms that are present here. So looking at fructose, as we said before, it's going to be C six H twelve O six, and so the simplest ratio of all of these is going to be C H two O. I've drawn out the um, formula for succinic acid here, but you can really just count all the atoms and get it. And if we were to simplify this ratio, it's going to be um, just CHO. And because these aren't the same, they have different empirical formulas, A isn't going to be the answer. If we look at B, then we know that the um, formula for this, again, is going to be C6H12O6, meaning that the empirical formula, or the simplest ratio between them all, is going to be CH2O. And I've just counted the atoms here again, and thankfully we are given all the structures here um, for glyceraldehyde, um, and C3H6O3, and that gives us a ratio of CH2O as well. So these have the same empirical formula, so B is going to be the answer for this one. Now I've drawn out the structures for C and D, so it might be worth going and counting all the atoms and working out what their empirical formulas would be, just for a bit of practice if you want to pause the video now and have a go at that. Otherwise, we'll move on to question 38. 38 says the reaction producing malic acid from fumaric acid is an example of what? So I've drawn out just this one step in this pretty long complicated series here. Uh, so we're just looking at the conversion of fumaric acid into malic acid. Um, we've got the, I suppose this is the easiest way to look at what's actually happening. We're breaking this carbon-carbon double bond and adding in this hydroxyl group. And what this does then is um, mean that we can call it straight away a hydration reaction. We're going to be adding in a hydroxyl group, replacing a carbon-carbon double bond. To rule out the other ones, I just want to explain that this wouldn't be a reduction reaction. Yes, we're, ad we're adding hydrogen here, but we're adding it in the context of a hydroxyl group. If we were just adding hydrogen on its own, then yes, it would be a reduction reaction, but that's not what's happening here. And why isn't it an oxidation reaction? Well, of course, we are adding oxygen, but again, it's in the context of this hydroxyl group. If we were just adding oxygen, um, then it would be different, but this isn't an oxidation reaction. And then why isn't it a hydrolysis reaction? Well, of course, we're breaking this carbon-carbon double bond, but we're not actually um, hydrolyzing this entire molecule. We're just adding in a hydroxyl group. So that means that this has to be a hydration reaction, giving us answer C for question 38. And finally, we're told that um, They've created a new artificial sweetener, and it's where all of the hydroxyl groups attached directly to the ring carbons in glucose um, are replaced with chlorine atoms. Okay, so we're told then to work out what the empirical formula of this chlorinated glucose would be. So I've drawn out the structure of glucose and the chemical formula for it. And let's just work through this. So we're told that it's not replacing all of the hydroxyl groups. It's only those four that are going to be attached to the ring, so not this one. So if we were to remove four of these, what are we really doing? So we're keeping the same number of carbons. We're getting rid of four of these hydrogens, so we can take that down to H8, and we're removing four of the oxygen, so that would go to O2. And of course, we're going to be adding in um, four of our chlorines as well. So the empirical formula, of course, like I said earlier, is going to be the simplest ratio between all of these atoms. So let's divide everything through by two. We get C3H4OCl2, and that gives us, or Cl2O, as it's written in the um, exam. 
that gives us an answer of C for question 39 then. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.